Next up, it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce the man he and I, this is our, our little dream. We wanted to read after over 10 years we have not read together. And, and we're both from San Antonio, so here we are this evening sharing the mic with some amazing, uh, just to me, some of the, the best talent in San Antonio. And um, we are here to celebrate the, the his latest book coming out. It's called The Last Poem on the Last Day, Mr. Charles Peters. Let's give it up. Bubblehead, how are you today? Where's Anthony? Where did he go? Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, sir. It's good to see you. Uh, like Victoria said, this came from uh, the Facebook interaction. You know, um, we live in a time where communication is only one click away. And I saw an article that the San Antonio Current wrote on her, a profile on her. And it got me to thinking. I went down memory lane, like, you know, when I was 17, 18, 19 years old, you know, just getting familiar with my pen and my paper. Uh, we would always run into each other at these readings and these book signings and things, and we just kept each other encouraged and inspired. And then years just passed, and we hadn't had a chance to read, so I just hit her and said, hey, you know, one day we should do something. She hit me back the next day like, hey, I know exactly what we should do. I know exactly the place. Let me make some calls, bam, bam, bam. And to look out and see the faces and the bodies and the minds and spirits here, I can't say enough about her spirit and the power of her words that got everybody here. You know? So I want to thank you. everybody. Give Victoria a round of applause. Um, the book that she mentioned, the last poem on the last day, is a book that I had a book release party for last night at Second Verse. Uh, every second Friday at Continental Cafe. It's a great open mic spot. You should check it out if you haven't been. Um, and it was a phenomenal release party. I'm grateful. I'm blessed. And today I just, um, I kind of have to explain because the book is a, it's one poem, it's one long poem, it's not a, a poetry book where it's different titles and the poem starts and stops. It's, it's one, I intend for the reader to open it, page one, read it all the way to the end. Um, it was a challenge for me, it was something different, something that I, it came out of me that way because I was writing about a time in my life that me and my wife were at, where we were, had the paperwork and the lawyers and we were ready to divorce. And um, it's. It's kind of ironic that the last piece that Anthony read before I come up is about divorce. That poem was about divorce. I'm just letting you know, just in case she was still wondering. But it was the proper setup because the piece that I, that I wrote in this book that I put out is about what I felt was my part in it and what I felt her part was. And where we messed up, where we could have done more or better. And fortunately, by the grace of God, we made it through that time. So, it's mixed feelings. I have to take myself to a place to read these words that I've been sitting on for the past five, six years, and I just haven't had the time or the commitment or even the balls to put it out, you know? But now the time is here because I felt like, uh, I feel like it's a piece of good writing, so I felt like it needed to be shared. And before I move on to some of the brighter and newer things that I'm writing, I had to get this off my chest, make sure it was there, because in my career as a writer, I don't ever want the public to wonder where I was with my craft or with my life. So this is a part of my life that I'm sharing. And that's where we're gonna start. Um, I know I'm strongest with a pen in my hand. So tonight I'm dressed as Samson. Draped in tigers, fur and lions, mang strong as an ox that tells of foxes I tie in knots and pick my teeth with sugar canes. But as sure as tomorrow is next, the truth remains. I'm weaker in her presence. Like Georgia's sweet peach, Delilah is on my mind. Sliding down my pole of memory, dancing topless on my table of recollection, I remember her as the apparition of lust that haunts me. Through the day as I dream, through the night as I sleep, she taunts me. Oftentimes I awake with an erection for my protection. I pray before those afternoon urges storming on me. This last poem is a love poem, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But she fights me. Diamond eyes and nectarous lips, she knows me. 
So like mama's gun, she caters to my bohemian side. Pours me tea and fucks my brain. Puts on cold train and makes it rain. How she does it, I still don't know, but I suppose heaven can't be too pleased with indiscretions such as these. But Delilah keeps whispering in my ear that the closest I'll ever get to repentance is this sentence. And I fear that if I fancy her taunts, I'll stumble. But can you blame me when I'm hungry for words? She poses for me. Naked as the sunrise, still as Egyptian pyramids, she poses and holds it between the margins is where I trace her. Every curve, a verb, her flesh, a metaphor for conception, her immaculate skin radiates a glow, a light, so like glory I bask in it, roll in it, right into my souls in it. Yet I know indulgences and righteous but neither is mediocrity. And finding a balance without hypocrisy is the poet's cross. Listen, lust feeds me. And I can't always say the same for love. She needs me. And I know better than that when it comes to you. If I should leave, love would survive without me. It takes sobriety and time to tap into emotions like these. So for those that can't, I squeeze hard as I can until my lungs fight back and on the seventh day I breathe. Look back at what I've created and leave and pray this will be remembered as a love poem despite my rhymes of weakness. I cut the world off to complete this and I refuse to hit that switch until I'm ready. I imagine my resolution will come with growth so I hope by the end of this poem I'll be taller or at least able to reach the truth without a stool. It sits on that top shelf behind the liquor and spirits and behind long nights where I spent my days when I thought no more of myself than a player. But with age, I've learned to tame that selfish spirit. So now with Delilah and her demons chasing me, I still find a way to focus. This last poem is indeed a love poem. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I came here to confess what I've been through. A war of the internal kind. Some call my wounds black art. She calls them Excuses. Yeah. I'm gonna read a little bit from the book. This is uh, toward the beginning of the story and um, kind of a recounting of how this poem took shape. Um, started with me having a nosebleed getting up and not being able to sleep, so I started writing. And two weeks later, I had a whole bunch of poetry about something I was going through. <laughs> you like nosebleeds? <laughs> 